Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to Amazed by the Quran, a series in which I share with you what I find amazing about the Quran. Uh, in today's example, or hopefully a few examples, what I want to talk to you about is different kinds of plurals in the Arabic language. It's a nerdy grammatical thing, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, in English, you have book or you have books, right? So you have a singular or you have a plural. The Arabic language is more complex than that. So you can have something singular, you can have something dual, referring to two things. But the, when it comes to the plural, they actually have different ranks of plurals. So you have like a normal plural and you have like a super awesome plural, jam'u kathra. So they have a way of saying, in some cases, not for every word, but for some cases, they may have a way of saying books and they may have one word for saying lots and lots of books. We have to add multiple adjectives to that in English, right? But they could just do it through jam'u kathra. A word like that in the Arabic language is uh, ni'mah. Ni'mah means blessing. And one of its plurals is just a regular plural, an'um. And actually you can even consider it a weaker plural. <coughs> it would probably appropriately be translated as the few blessings. So I'm saying the few in English, an'um. But that's actually embedded in the meaning of the word in the Arabic language. And another plural exists for uh, the word blessing, ni'am, which is jam'u uh, kathra, which would then mean many, many blessings. So an'um is a few blessings and ni'am is many, many blessings. Uh, you don't have to keep up with the Arabic for the purpose of this example. Just the idea that some plurals are weak and some plurals are strong. The tragedy again of translation is that when these two words, they both the plurals occur once each in the Quran uh, and they're translated as blessings, right? So one time Allah used the weaker and the other time Allah used the stronger and yet both times the translation says blessings. It actually doesn't distinguish between the stronger plural and the weaker plural, right? So I wanted to highlight to you when did Allah use the stronger plural and when did Allah use the weaker plural because I wanted to highlight how precise, how laser precise the language of the Quran is, how much it takes into consideration context and what's being said and what the perfect fit for that particular context will be. Allah talks about Himself and He says, وَأَصْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا He unleashed onto you His blessings. Now in this context, because it is Allah who is unleashing blessings, and then he adds ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَ which means the ones you can see and the ones you cannot see. He's basically talking about countless blessings. So you guessed it, he used the powerful plural, نِعَمَهُ But when he talked about Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said شَاكِرًا لِأَنْعُمِهِ Ibrahim alayhi salam used to be grateful for Allah's blessings. But ironically he used an'umihi, the weaker plural, which would actually be translated the few blessings. How could Ibrahim alayhi salam be grateful for a few blessings? He's the most, one of the most grateful human beings that ever lived. As a matter of fact, Islam itself, the religion of gratitude, alhamdulillah, this religion is named after him, millata abikum Ibrahim, the religion of your father Ibrahim. So how is it that Allah is using, he was grateful for a few blessings? Understand this in perspective. Compared to the blessings Allah gives him, Compare that with the blessings he's actually able to be grateful for throughout his entire life of gratitude. As grateful as he was with respect to us, in contrast with all the other countless blessings, those still amount to a few. If a human being was grateful their entire life, you can't look back actually from the Quran's perspective and say they were grateful for lots of blessings. You can only say they were only grateful for a few blessings. And actually being able to be grateful for a few blessings is a huge accomplishment in the Quran. It's not a small, it's not actually an insult. It's a compliment. Why? Because Allah Himself says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوَا Look at the remarkable statement. He says, if you were to fully account for, if you were to try to fully account for one blessing of Allah, you wouldn't be able to fully encompass it. You cannot fully grasp one blessing. That's what He says to all of humanity. You cannot encompass one blessing. Ibrahim alayhi salam is able to be grateful for a few blessings. This is actually a compliment to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And so between the contrast between the more and the few is actually highlighting a very beautiful thing. No human being can ever say in this life, if, if Ibrahim can't say alayhi salam that he was grateful for so many blessings, no human being will ever be able to say that I'm grateful enough. That's just never gonna be the case. Your entire life spent in gratitude will only amount to just a few blessings. 
And there are so many batina. That's why the word batina is important. There are so many blessings that are hidden from you that you'll never even know were blessings. You won't even know. How can you be grateful for something you don't even know? That's been benefiting you all along. SubhanAllah. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us a nation of gratitude. Make us a nation of that, that can be on that legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam of being grateful. And may Allah Azza wa Jal overlook our ingratitude. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.